Introducing the Steelers offense at left tackle for Marty, number 78, Alejandro Villanueva. At left guard from Bloomsburg, number 71, Matt Filer. Your center from Penn State, number 61, Stephen Wisniewski. And right guard from Alabama, number 60, J.C. Hassenauer. And right tackle from Western Michigan, number 76, Takuma Okorafor. At tight end from North Carolina, number 85, Eric Ebron. At tight end from Rice, number 89, Vance McDonald. At running back from Kentucky, number 24, Benny Snell Jr. At wide receiver from Oklahoma State, number 13, James Washington. Your wide receiver from Southern Cal, number 19, Juju Smith-Schuster. And your quarterback from Miami, Ohio, number 7, Ben Roethlisberger. Good evening, everyone, and welcome live to Heinz Field for Steelers Training Camp Live, presented by FedEx. And we're getting a look at the Steelers going through an actual game day situation. They just had the announcement of the starting offense, just to give these guys a feel for what it's going to be like here as this season starts in roughly three weeks from now. And we welcome you inside our Tremendous studio set up here at Heinz Field. Charlie Batch alongside. <laughs> and, Charlie, it's good to get some football, even though it's still not football. But it certainly feels like it right now after it, that opening introduction. Yes, it does. With the weather, you hear an opening or the introduction team. Man, this is great to be a part of because this is simulating actually what they may have in a couple weeks here to go on ahead uh, as they prepare for the Giants. So we've had a lot of training camp going on right now. Padded practices, lots of them this week. Charlie, what's your first impression about what you've seen from – Padded practices for the first time uh, all really off season. Yeah, I mean, it was just watching these guys, especially when you're talking about back on backers, if that's always a drill that's highlighted because we know what the veterans can do, but they want to see what the new guys and what those young rookies and early players that can come in here and hopefully contribute on his team. And if you can't protect and you can't protect Ben Roethlisberger from the running back position, you won't be out there uh, on the field when it matters. So that was something that really continues that I watch and I'm going to continue to follow over the next week or so. How much of a disadvantage is it for coaches who don't get a chance to see preseason games, who don't get a chance really to see some of these young guys? You know, we see rookies coming in. They're going to have roles, but you wonder how much they can actually put into play this year as a rookie without the benefit of a preseason game. And that's tough. I mean, in veterans, guy, they know how important those uh, actual games are because if you're on the bubble and you're trying to convince the coaches, maybe you need those special teams reps live action during the course of a game, something that you typically don't get when you're out here in practice. Today we will see that as it relates to what could these returners can do when they're talking about live action. So this is very important practice for a lot of these young guys. Yeah, they're going to get a chance to see what it's like, uh, at least uh, right in this stadium, uh, as regular members of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you're seeing them on the field right now. Jordan Berry, you see a lot of guys in their uniforms. And Missy Matthews of Steelers.com joins us. And, man, this is uh, actually a very nice kind of thing to see, Missy, because these guys have been sitting there doing this stuff day in and day out. It's now like a game day situation. I'm sure they're excited for it. Yeah, guys, it was super exciting when they got to just put the pads on. But now, as you said, Coach Tomlin is trying to simulate a game day atmosphere for everybody. No preseason games. So think about all those rookies, the new faces to the Steelers. They have no idea how the Steelers operate in terms of when you show up to the stadium, how player warm-ups go, who picks the music, where you stand when you're going to be introduced at Heinz Field. Of course, there are no fans here, but you can tell the team. Coach Tomlin was even standing exactly where he stands on the Steelers' sideline when 
when the team is introduced. And it was the offense, as you guys said. I did take notes of who they announced, so maybe that gives us a little hint of who will be practicing tonight. Al Villanueva, uh, Stefan Wisniewski, Matt Filer, J.C. Hausenheyer, uh, Chuksakor for Eric Ebron, Vance McDonald, Benny Snell. James Washington, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Ben Roethlisberger, of course. The offense is wearing black. The defense is wearing white. They had the locker room set up as well to give them that feel when they came to the stadium. Kind of a little bit of a change, as you said, Bob, from what they're used to during training camp. It is a new venue for a lot of people, but for some people, this is the only place they know of being a Pittsburgh Steeler. Also, some crowd noise, a better term for it. They are saying that uh, we will say... uh, They're calling it something that was kind of accrued by NFL films and the NFL previous games here at Heinz Field to pump that through, test it out, see what it sounds like. As you guys know, week one against the New York Giants, that's a Monday night football game. The Giants have already said no fans. So for the Steelers, what this feels like right now is what that's going to feel like for them on week one. Bud Dupree, who has been fast and spectacular in individuals from what I've seen so far during Steelers camp, has also been very vocal. According to the Steelers poll report, he has been motioning to the empty fans, asking for crowd noise. The defense (laughs) has been chirping, and they have been providing their own especially when the offense is uh, working with Ben Roethlisberger. So we will have to see what this crowd noise is like tonight, guys. That will be interesting to see, and that's another interesting thing to see. Thank you, Missy. It's Ben Roethlisberger, and he looks trim. He looks ready to roll. Uh, Charlie, from that point of view, uh, there was a lot of speculation seeing Ben in the offseason. People thought he put on weight. I didn't think so. He was wearing you know, heavier clothes maybe, but, man, he looks trim. He looks ready to go, and I know – This is an important season for him as he comes back from that surgery. It is. And when you talked about a lot of people from the outside world talking about the weight that he gained, they were looking at his face with a full beard. So that's something that you can turn around and measure. But I know he took that with a grain of salt, and he came back in tremendous shape. And the team is feeding off of this guy. This is a guy, 56,000 total career passing yards. This team, they are really on his shoulders as it relates to what type of identity that this offense is going to run. And they are really excited for having him back. And the fact is he's a game changer at the line of scrimmage too, Charlie, right? You know as a quarterback how much influence you can have, and I think those young guys last year may be a little apprehensive. I think it helps not just the wide receivers and the offensive line, but the running game as well. It does, and when you look at what Ben does at the line of scrimmage, of course you're breaking the huddle with the play in mind, but at any given moment, Ben Roethlisberger can change the play at the line of scrimmage, and he can do that with less than five seconds on the shot clock, and hopefully everybody at their play clock, not shot clock, but everybody at the line of scrimmage must communicate and identify and get to the right play, and that's why it's important for these young guys to make sure that they're getting the reps out here with him in the huddle. Yeah, and if you look at what Ben Roethlisberger did in 2018 versus what happened last year with some of the young guys, and you know, give them credit, they, they somehow ended up with eight wins with two young quarterbacks, but Ben Roethlisberger, the numbers speak for themselves, uh, and you can see right here with 18 touchdown passes, uh, you know, the bottom line is uh, he's a guy who can make a difference, especially in the red zone, 34 touchdowns compared to 18 for those two we talked about. Now, the interception total was higher, and I know Roethlisberger is committing to dropping that, but man... Tun Shilkin, longtime Steeler analyst here on the radio network and uh, a man who knows all about what goes on on the football field joins us right now. And Tunch, when you talk about what he brings, you know, this defense, if it's as good as it was last year, you had a quarterback like Ben to an offense that I think can generate much more points than they did last year. That's a pretty good combination, I would think. That's how important his role is this season. You know, the defense is great, uh, Bob and Charlie, but Ben is uh, on point. You know, I, I interviewed him at the Man Up Conference, and he looks so slim and trim. And I talked to him about he is hungry. He wants to get uh, Super Bowls. He is hungry. He is coming to camp with great shape. Uh, you know, he hasn't taken a day off yet, and he's throwing the ball well. He's got a lot of velocity. He's got a tight spiral, and he's accurate. And, uh, you know, one of the things I, I've noticed that when he scrambles – He's quick, you know, because he lost all that weight. And, you know, one of the things I heard him say, uh, and, Charlie, you can relate to this. Uh, when, you know, uh, last year when he was injured, he saw the big picture. You know, one of the things he mentioned that when he comes off uh, the field, he doesn't see the big picture because he's talking to the wide receivers, he's talking to the running backs, he's talking to Randy. But last year... He was talking to everybody, and he was uh, seeing the field more clearly. 
And, uh, I, you know, I was encouraged by that, and uh, I think he's going to have a great year. Yeah, the other thing, too, uh, Charlie and Tunch, is, uh, you know, the offensive line, its importance. And, you know, I don't know what you guys expect from Roethlisberger. Back in 2018, they were throwing the ball an awful lot. Right. Uh, but I do expect the run game. They brought in Derek Watt. They have a lot of guys back there. And I would think they'd want to maybe take their time acclimating Ben early on, especially in the season. Is that part of it? Do you expect more of a run or – you know, more pass balance. What are you looking at in 2020? You know, I'm looking at, at, a, at a more of a run game, a run focus. You know, uh, as, you, if, as you look over the NFL, there's a, a, a more of a smash mouth uh, offense uh, like when we play. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that I, I, I am very impressed with was the offensive line. Uh, you know, Alejandro came in and he is jacked. His arms are bigger than it was last year, and he's punching better, and he's uh, uh, driving the ball right. And uh, Matt Filer, I think at left guard, he's going to be a better player than at right tackle. And Pounce, uh, you know, he's he's very very athletic. And uh, David DeCastro, I you know I love David. He's a tough guy. He's uh, he's great in space. He's great on the pull. And uh, I, I I'm impressed with uh, Chooks and Zach Banner, and they're going to be competing to see who gets that right tackle spot. And one of the things I noticed that Chooks is a great athlete. Zach has been punching well, and he's been coming off the ball well, and he's got great feet. So I think the offensive line is going to be the best ever. Those big words right there, big ever. Words. I know. I Tug, like you, you're, you're taking yourself out of that group with you and Wolf now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the one thing that stood out to me when Tunch mentioned, he talked about Ben Roethlisberger not missing a practice. And I guarantee you that conversation that's happening between him and Mike Tomlin, Coach Tomlin's trying to give him a day off, and Ben is probably turning around saying, I had 14 <laughs> weeks, 15 weeks if you include the bye last right. year, so I don't need any more time off. I need to go out here and work the timing with my young receivers. Yeah, you know, I, I think he's sharp, uh, Charlie. You know, when you get hurt and you miss a whole year. Now, I've never missed a whole year. But when you get hurt and you miss a whole year, you come back really hungry. You come back uh, deprived of a year. And you are, so, you are at great focus and determination. And you want to prove, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, you know, in, in – He's an old guy, and he wants to prove everybody uh, that he's still got it. Yeah, well, he's 38, and it looks like he still has it. I know he's motivated to play here, guys, and Ben Roethlisberger, hopefully healthy for a full season, will lead this offense into averaging the kind of points per game that will take some pressure off of this defense because this defense is good enough to do a lot of great things as they return 10 of 11. The only missing guy is Javon Hargrave, and they've replaced him with Chris Wormley. Yeah. We have uh, a lot more coming up when we analyze the Pittsburgh Steelers with regard to their offense, their defense. It's a veteran team, but they have some – Definite questions when it comes to depth. Young guys trying to impress, and this is going to be a big night for those guys in front of Mike Tomlin and the coaching staff. I want to let you know we're just getting started. We also want your social media posts. What are you doing? With, uh, show us how you're watching this tonight. And also, we have put up some of the questions that we are looking for for you to answer. Um, and we get a glimpse of what we call a waterfall event. Uh, this is a whole bunch of uh, different tweets from people who have been following the Steelers and how they're watching here tonight. So we have a lot more coming up. Don't go away. This is Steelers Training Camp Live 2020, presented by FedEx on a beautiful night in Pittsburgh. Steelers on the field at Heinz Field. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. It's Steelers Training Camp Live. We are here as the team engages in practice and getting ready for the start of the season, which is basically three weeks away. And we're honored to have with us now the president of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Art Rooney II. Art, how are you? And, boy, what a setup you guys have put together here. Well, Bob, it's good to, good to see you here at Heinz Field. And uh, I, I wish there were some fans out there with you, but uh, we're glad to be uh, having a night practice and, uh, you know, be a, it'll be a good night, I think, for the team. Yeah, certainly something to use as a ramp up to get things uh, going. Art, how long did it take for you guys to figure out a strategy? Obviously, this was unprecedented. Nobody saw this coming. And yet you guys had to figure out how to contain people, how to put together a training camp, and tell us how successful it's been considering all of this ad-libbing you guys have had to do. You know, uh, this has been a, a, a long planning process, Bob. started really back in May when we started to realize that, uh, number one, at that point, that we were not going to have a normal off-season program. And then uh, as we progressed along, it, it looked like we were going to have to change plans and not go up to St. Vincent, which, uh, you know, our, our, we're friends up there at St. Vincent and Latrobe. We're sorry we're not there with you, and we'll, we'll be back next year. But... Uh, it was a long planning process, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, we felt like we could create uh, a, a good situation here at Heinz Field, a lot of room to spread people out, and, uh, and so far, I think it's worked pretty well. A lot of other leagues we've seen, Art, have used bubbles. Uh, there was talk baseball might do it. They chose not to. Hockey, basketball did. Was there ever conversation about a bubble for football? You know, Bob, I don't think there was ever a serious conversation about trying to put the, the whole leg in one or two cities. Uh, just the, the logistics of that were going to be uh, difficult to manage, and the Players Association uh, was, was never very enthusiastic about that. So, uh, uh, no, we never really talked about the, uh, a bubble like the, you know, like the NHL and the NBA is doing. I think one of the things we've seen is that if you do this properly, wherever you do it, however you do it, it can be successful. So with that in mind, how confident are you, Art, that this season could go by all the way through uninterrupted, or what would it take to interrupt it? You know, I feel good about the, the season, Bob. I think, uh, you know, I think we'll play the season. Uh, you know, if we have to adjust along the way somewhere along the line, I think we, we have to be able to adapt. I think that's what this – this year's been that for everybody. You have to learn to adapt and, and uh, make the best out of the situation. And uh, I know the leg is prepared for that. We're prepared for that. So, uh, you know, I feel good about the season getting started on time and uh, hopefully we'll end on time. We'll see. So you mentioned earlier about fans. I'd love to see fans up here too, but there won't be any fans. At least that's the way it is right now. So how do you create really a home field advantage without fans? Well, it certainly will be different, and uh, you know we we miss fans. We haven't given up completely on the potentially having fans at some point during the season. We we continue to work with the governor's office on that, and so we'll see if you know if things improve. Uh, perhaps we'll have some fans uh, at some point during the season, but uh, it'll be different. Uh, the home field ad advantage will be very different around the league. You know, some stadiums are going to have fans, some are not. So it's. Uh, it's like, like everything else in this year. It's going to be an unusual situation that we'll just have to adapt to. Art Rooney, the second, our special guest. I want to ask you about your team coming back, Art, because I think you're in kind of a luxury position in that you return just about everyone from a defense that was one of the top defenses in the NFL. Offensively, a lot of guys return, plus the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, healthy. Does that give you guys an advantage? Because there are a lot of teams with new head coaches, new players, first-year players, and they won't have the benefit of really an acclimation run-up. You know, Bob, I think uh, we feel good about our team and uh, certainly the, the number of veterans we have returning and the, the veteran leadership we have on this team. And obviously uh, the coaching staff pretty much intact from last year. So uh, I think all those things uh, should be helpful to us. But, uh, you know, we just have to go out there and, and uh, play the games and, and uh, do the best we can. But, you know, we feel good about where we are, and, and we just have to keep preparing hard to get ready for the season. I think stability is one of the things you guys certainly show every franchise, not just in football and other sports. How important is that, especially given, you know, this situation here with COVID-19, having the coaching staff in place, the same consistent message? Well, certainly uh, the, the challenge of not having an off-season program, not having a normal training camp, not having preseason games, uh, it, it's a challenge for every team in the league. And and uh, like you said, having a veteran team and 
uh, a, a consistent, stable coaching staff. I think uh, hopefully all of those things are going to be beneficial to us. And, uh, you know, we just have to build on that as the, as the season wears on. And like every year, there's business considerations when it comes to uh, salary caps. And I would imagine this is a difficult thing to assess from a business point of view because you don't know necessarily how this is going to play out. You don't know what kind of cap numbers you're looking at. And yet I know you have guys you want to bring back. The name that keeps coming up is Cam Hayward, who's been such a leader on this team in so many ways. And I know you want to keep him. How much of that goes into all of this planning, especially when you have to make decisions now, maybe that impact the future? Well, again, it's uh, it's just an unusual year, and, and uh, the planning for salary cap uh, has been difficult, uh, just like everything else about this year. Uh, so we're you know we're doing the best. We're trying to make the best decisions we can make. Uh, the good news is, I think we'll have our team pretty much intact going into this season, and uh, you know we'll just have to deal with next season, next season. I know one thing. People are going to be excited to hear announcements. We got Larry Richard going to announce the team. People coming out here in uniforms. I think things are revving up, and I know many people excited to watch Steelers football starting in September. So, Art, wish you all the best this year. You guys have done a wonderful job with this setup, and hopefully it's a memorable one in 2020. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Bob. Great to be with you. You also even though it's virtually, but we'll solve that at some point. <laughs> That's going right. to do it for Art Rooney II, president of the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have plenty more coming back right here as we present Training Camp Live on Pittsburgh CW. Welcome back live as we continue with Training Camp Live, presented by FedEx right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani, Charlie Batch, Missy Matthews, and Tunch Ilkin with you. Steelers on the field right now going through a practice session. And listen, we want to hear from you. I, I tweeted something out earlier today wanting to know your thoughts about this team, roster, uh, battles they may have going on, especially backups, but also how you are watching tonight's festivities. And we want to see a photo from you. Let us know what you think. Uh, and we certainly have a lot of different things coming up like Andy Ruffalo who says this is his uh, Steelers Nation Unite game room and it's decked out in the black and gold he'll be there watching and Andy if you are thank you we appreciate it and we want to hear from more of you and if you have some questions that we could put on Twitter that we could utilize here make sure you do that as well when we come back we're going to focus on the Steelers offense specifically run game wide receivers that's all coming back right here live Pittsburgh CW it's training camp live presented by FedEx
an anthem for the champion For all of you never give up the fight Who gave it all to still a standing Defy the odds and lay it on the line This is an anthem for the champion Busy getting better all the time We raise the bar and we demand it Field Training Camp Live 2020 presented by FedEx. Bob Pompiani here and Charlie Batch. We have uh, an offense that features a very crowded running back field. Uh, James Conner returns from injury. He's been motivated. Uh, he is not going to be here tonight practicing. But I want to get your thoughts on what he's done in this offseason. And does that translate into success this season given his injury history? And I, I think that's something that you when, when you look at this group, you know, it's a stacked position. James Conner, obviously, he is the starter here, but they drafted Anthony McFarlane. They have Benny Snell going from year one to year two that they expect a lot from. What happens with Jalen Samuels? So there's a lot of depth in that position. But when you also add it's the speed of Kareth White, he's the fastest running back. What do you do with that if you're talking about the passing game? So there are a lot of questions. So – uh, that we have, but there will be teams that will be looking at this position because they know it's a loaded position. And Jalen Samuels is a guy who can do a lot out of the backfield. Uh, certainly the tight ends added Eric Ebron to the mix, but Tunch Ilkin joins us here. And, and Tunch, this run game, uh, you look at the, the people. Benny Snow lost 12 pounds. I think that's uh, something that would help him with speed. But they brought in McFarland to Charlie's point about speed. You know, the Steelers did not break off many 20-plus yard runs last year with a combination of Bell, uh, Snell, Connor, and Jalen Samuels. With Anthony McFarland, when you look at what he did in Maryland, there were a number of games where he had 20-plus runs multiple in games. So this is a breakaway uh, running back. How important will he be and how much playing time will he get, do you think? You know, I think Anthony McFarland is going to get a lot of playing time. I, you know, I am a big fan. Uh, he's got great vision, and when he runs the outside zone, he can press the tight end and bounce it outside, but he can also cut it uh, back uh, behind the center. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's got great vision, uh, and he's got a great jump cut, and he runs low. I've seen him make a lot of big runs uh, this week, and I'm a big fan of his, and I think he's going to be uh, a, a really good number two running back. But, uh, you know, uh, James Conner, uh, he's also looking good. He's looking fast. He's looking trim. Uh, you know, uh, he was training so hard. Did you see his lats, Charlie? When, when you know, when he uh, when he posed for that, his lats like are, are are like the wings of man, like Sergio Oliva. Uh, he's like a bodybuilder, and so he was shredded. He's cut up, and he is hungry. He, I agree with you there. And when you look at him, he looks in phenomenal shape. And this is a guy playing in his contract year. Everybody knows what that looks like. And as when you heard in the previous segment salary cap issues you don't know what it looks like for this one I mean you know what it looks like for this year but what does it look like moving forward so you right. can't make those moves on whether or not you're going to keep a guy so trust me the fire is lit underneath him to have one fantastic season but here's one thing that I would warn the group of the running back groups don't look at the pecking order in front of you because it reminds me of 2005 we were sitting there. The roster seemed like it was set. We had a guy by the name of Deuce Staley. I think we know right. the next guy, Jerome Bettis. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we've heard of that guy before. But these two got hurt in the preseason. And then there was a guy that was elevated by the name of Willie Parker, who we did not know who he was at that time. And in the first game here at Heinz Field, he rushed for about 180 yards in his first game. And everybody's like, wow, that guy can play. Where, where was he at? He was stacked in a loaded group similar to this. So these running backs that are on this roster go out here and show what you can do on this The other thing field. you see about uh, James Conner in 2018 was his ability to, to catch the ball out of the backfield. Right. You know, a lot of people Tunch didn't think that was part of his game. He had 55 receptions. Now, if he can get back to those numbers and he will be the feature back here, uh, then that would be a great situation for them to be in. But what about 
about Benny Snell's role here if that does happen? How much time should he get on the field if Connor's running well? Yeah, well, you know, Benny Snell lost 12 pounds, and uh, uh, Eddie Faulkner was talking about how uh, he came in camp in great shape. He was running uh, all off season, And, you know, uh, Charlie, uh, you mentioned Kareth White. Uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of Kareth White. And he can dodge raindrops. I mean, he can dodge <laughs> raindrops. And he is fast, uh, like you said. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see him as a return guy. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And this is one thing, when you look at White's position, that's why that back-on-backers drill is important to prove that he can pick up blitz and he can be on the field because you don't want to be known as just a screen-and-draw guy right. when you step on the field. So he has to become more multidimensional. You know, there's another name that we should bring up, and it's Derek Watt, uh, another of the Watt brothers. So TJ's here, and you know what he's done. Uh, Derek Watt was brought here. And, Charlie, I'll start with you here. Uh, I would imagine, based on what they're paying him, they expect – Big things for number 44 right there as a, as a lead fullback, but also he's going to do special team. He does a lot, but I would expect more usage of the fullback because he's here, wouldn't you? Yeah, a little bit more than what Roosevelt Nix was on his roster, but when you look at where Derek Watt was, is at, this is a guy who led the, ta- special, the league in special teams tackles last year. We lose Tyler Matikavich, our best special team player, so that's an even swap there, and they think that maybe you get a little bit more in Derek Watt. So this is a guy who a better veteran guy. He brings that experience, and he will bring that knowledge to the running back room. So he brings back energy, he brings back passion, and he's a great special teams player. But I want to go back to uh, how what he is as a fullback. Uh, last year in the Chargers, we saw him dig out uh, linebackers. So he's great on the ISO. He's a headbanger. He doesn't shy from uh, contact. He doesn't gather himself. He runs through uh, linebackers, and I think that uh, uh, James Conner is going to love him. Yeah, and it was interesting. Danny Smith, guys, this week was interviewed, and they said, what do you think of Derek Watt? He goes, he's a Watt. They should write a book, Mr. and Mrs. Watt, on how to be football players. And I think that pretty much sums it up. But there are two of the three Watts here in Pittsburgh, and it should be interesting to watch Derek in his first season as a lead blocker. We have more coming up. Don't go away. We want your social media responses as well. This is Steelers Training Camp Live presented by FedEx on Pittsburgh CW. We will be back. It's a beautiful night for football here at Heinz Field. It's just 
tremendous, and people are getting very, very amped up knowing that the start of the season is in September, the 10th for the opener for the league, the 14th, Monday nights, dealers, and Giants as they start. So this is going to be a nice ramp up and complete a, vi- a very busy week as the Steelers have had padded practices. Now this will be four of 14 mandated. We talk defense now in this segment. Charlie, I want to talk to you about one name specifically, and that name would be Stefan Tuitt. He's not practicing tonight, one of those nights off, but man, having him back, this was a defense that put up top five numbers without him generally. He got hurt in that Chargers game, but with him, how good can this defense be uh, even without Javon Hargrave who signed uh, a big contract elsewhere? Yeah, when you lose Hargrave and you add to it back to this lineup, this is a guy that they truly believe is a first-round pick. He's going into his seventh season, so they know what he's capable of uh, bringing to the table. When he's healthy and you put Cam and it out there, man, there's a 1-1-A. One one there is no drop-off on that defensive inside. They fully expect him to come back, bounce back in, in big ways, and this is a guy who's full of confidence, and he's out to prove that he's not injury-prone. You know, Charlie, he, he's, he had three-and-a-half sacks in six games, and, uh, you know, he's a dominant player. He can be a dominant player, and, you know, he's got a great rip, and he's got a great club coming back to the inside. He's a natural pass rusher, and he's natural uh, playing in the run. And when you talk about he and Cam, they feed off each other, and the the two of them uh, are great players, and uh, I'm excited about seeing Stefan Tuitt this year. All right, talking about Cam, since you guys brought him up, touch back to you on this one. It seems like he gets better with age here. He's now 31, and yet his best seasons have been at age 28, 29, 30. He's been pro ball in each, all pro in each. That's not normal for guys who get in their 30s, but he seems like he can play for a long period of time the way he's going. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Cam. You know, one of the things that uh, I admire about him, he is quick off the ball, and he puts his hands in the chest of the offensive lineman you know he had his way with Quentin Nelson and everybody was talking about Quentin Nelson being the best offensive guard in the National Football League but Cam uh, abused him Cam drove him back into the quarterback's lap uh, three or four times and uh, you know uh, and you know Cam changes directions well and he plays the run well and he rushes the passer he's got a great bull rush and uh, he bolts people over yes he does another guy who's done that from the safety position is Mika Fitzpatrick and when this trade was made last year people said my goodness the Steelers are giving up a first round pick well what they got in return was a first round pick 11th overall and this guy made this defense I thought what it was and it was difficult to pass down the field against him Uh, and just look at these numbers here Charlie Uh, the Minka effect we call it uh, you know pre-Minka and then post-Minka. It was unbelievable how people didn't even bother going. But not only that, his tackling ability is tremendous. He anticipates instinct. Now, I would think the next thing is he and Terrell Edmonds have got to figure out a chemistry like Clark and Palomalu had. Absolutely. And when you look at those numbers, remember before uh, Fitzpatrick's got here, you know, Cam, Cam Kelly was a starting safety in that position, so they made a move heading into week three. You mentioned that communication back there in the back end. This reminds me of that Troy, Palomalu, Ryan Clark, when they were able to have the nonverbal communication. They could just look at each other and tell what each other was doing, and they're able to feed off of that. In turn, both of them had really Pro Bowl years uh, throughout the years. Now, can Edmonds feed off of what Fitzpatrick is doing? If they can get that nonverbal, man, this is going to be one heck of a talent. You know, I, I, I agree with you, Charlie. I, I, you know, one of the things ter, uh, when uh, Terrell Austin was doing his uh, press conference, he talked about moving Minka around. And, uh, you know, then uh, Terrell Edmonds has got to be uh, complimentary to that. And so I think that they're, you know, I, I've been watching them uh, uh, in practice uh, uh, this week, and they they play well off each other and i am excited about what they're going to look like yeah and i think that's important too and when you have a guy like minka if he starts moving around don't you have to know that terrell edmonds has to cover up for a lot of this just because of the ad living ability all right let's switch to devin bush charlie a man came in as a rookie. They traded up to get him. They, uh, they knew that he could be a special player. He played in all 16, started in 15, put up big tackle numbers. What does he have to improve on in year number two? For him, it's more communication in the middle. I mean, he knows all the physical 
attributes that are there. They know he can play. That's why they made a move to draft up for him. But he now needs to stay on the field for the entire three downs. Is he capable of doing that? Yes, he proved that he can do that. But for some reason, they removed him off the field last year. He's out to prove that he belongs and he is a three-down backer and he can make a lot of plays in the passing game. You know, Charlie, uh, uh, middle linebackers got to play with their eyes. And, uh, you know, I, I think that as the season went on, he started reacting uh, quicker uh, to the stimulus that, uh, uh, that was coming at him. And uh, this year, I think he's better. And, you know, one, one of the things I love about uh, Vince Williams is uh, in combination with Devin Bush, these guys play off one another uh, very well. They play in uh, they play together uh, very, very well. And so, you know, uh, Vince is the thumper. He is the physical player. And uh, uh, Devin is the sideline, the sideline guy. So I think they, uh, they feed off one another and they play wonderful together. And this is something that really, when you, as an offense, when you see a rookie linebacker that's in there like a Devin Bush, from the offensive side, you show, show him one thing coming out of the huddle, you give a shift in the motion, that's three calls that he has right. to make at the line of scrimmage. So he just has to continue to study and become sharper mentally that he's able to anticipate what the offense is going to do. You know, yeah. the thing about Vince Williams, too, uh, is the fact that this guy was a sixth-round pick. He had his best year, Tony if I uh, remember this correctly, with Ryan Shazier. Right. Now with Bush together I think you'll see even better production from Vince Williams you know I you know Vince if you watch him uh, he uh, as the uh, uh, cadence goes on he cheats to the side he thinks the play is going to and he never guesses wrong and one of the things he does is uh, you know he beats the guard to the uh, uh, to the uh, inner intersection and he pounds the guard he's he's a pounder and then when he uh, takes the back door, he makes plays. And so, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Vince is a great, and he's also a great pass rusher. I think he, two years, three years ago, he had eight and a half sacks, and uh, he he's great from off, and he, he, you know, he changes directions well. But one of the things I love about him is he shakes Charlie, and then he explodes into the bull rush. Yes, he does, and that's a big weapon if you're an inside linebacker like Vince Williams is. And then it comes down to depth, and those are issues that are going to be factored out as well with Ulysses Gilbert. They have guys, Robert Spillane, those guys may be called upon, and it, it gives the Steelers a great comfort knowing that they played here last year. They know them better in year number two. We have more coming up. The Steelers are now going through some audio things, as you can hear here, trying to make it like you're on the road, simulate these kinds of games. We have plenty more coming up, and we're very thankful you joined us here tonight on a beautiful night in Pittsburgh for Steelers Training Camp 2020. It's live, and it's right here. Presented by FedEx on Pittsburgh CW.
Welcome back. Training Camp Live. Presented by FedEx right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani, Charlie Batch, Tunchuk, and Missy Matthews. And we asked you to uh, let us know how you were watching tonight's practice here on CW. And we got a lot of different responses here. The Princess of Power says this is how we're doing it from Melbourne, Australia. Charlie, it never ceases to amaze me. People from all over the world will find Steeler coverage no matter where it is. And uh, Australia is a big hotspot, as is Germany. <laughs> So <laughs> a lot of fans, man, it's unbelievable that when you see these type of responses in a terrible town all over the terrible town all over the world. Yeah, we have a lot of people out there who have uh, offered up and we thank you for your posts. Also, the questions concerning some of the positions. We're trying to get into those as we can. One of the positions that's changed a little bit is tight end with the acquisition of Eric Ebron. They signed him to a free agent contract just a couple of years ago. He was outstanding in Indianapolis. Missy Matthews joins us now with what the tight end situation is looking, how he can help Vance McDonald. Missy. Well, Charlie, I'm sure you would agree Ben Roethlisberger is probably licking his chops, adding Ebron to the mix. Vance McDonald is healthy. And with this young wide receiver core that is healthy and is going to have a little bit more time to get familiar with Ben Roethlisberger, of course, his season was cut short last year. So for somebody like Deontay Johnson, this training camp is huge. And as you mentioned earlier, Johnson not able to go tonight, but Vance McDonald is one of those guys who's very close to Ben Roethlisberger, both on and off the field. And I remember back to last year at training camp at St. Vincent College, I had a chance to catch up with Vance on one of the first days, and I said, what is it like with number seven? You worked with him this offseason. How is he going to be ready to go? And he was gushing. You have to remember that was when Antonio Brown left the team. There was a lot of national criticism about Ben Roethlisberger. Well, this year when Vance McDonald was asked about number seven as just about every single player or member of the Steelers organization is, he was gushing again. And that's mainly because he had a front row seat of what Ben Roethlisberger went through coming back from surgery, the rehab, the workouts, getting to know some of the new guys, whatever way he could before training camp and Vance McDonald said for sure he's back and he's hungry for a championship but this is the most I've ever seen Ben uh in terms of his hunger for winning a championship not to say that he didn't have it in the past but like I can respect the idea or, or you know the assumption that you know being down last season made it all more real for him I'm loving the leadership from him I'm loving um again just that hunger and the fire and it's I think that it you uh, we'll notice that trickle down to the entire offense um, as you see us kind of get starting rock and rolling here. All right, so that was Vance McDonald. As we said, Eric Ebron, somebody that Ben said he was excited about. And going back a few years, Ben was talking about having two tight ends. He mentioned Heath Miller and Matt Spath. And the excitement having Vance McDonald and Eric Ebron. In terms of the tight end position, during individuals pretty much this entire week of, high, of training camp here at Heinz Field, Coach Tomlin has been actively watching them hitting the sleds. And Ben even said these two guys don't want to just be known as the pass-catching tight ends. They want to be known for their block as well and that's something he said he has been harping on them as well and of course coach Tomlin with a watchful eye Charlie I'm sure you know what that means he's sending a message whether he's saying it or not oh he really is and he watches those drills and when you look at the wild card in that position Jack Zach Gentry this is a guy who they drafted a year ago they expect big things from him and if you take it back to the 2008 season when they when we won Super Bowl 43 man that was a loaded group we talked about Heath Miller you talk about Matt Spath but the wild card in that position was Sean McHugh a guy who we picked up from the Detroit, and man, he, he added depth to the position, and that's what they expect Zach Gentry to do with the tight end position. Yeah, I want to get back uh, because all of these guys are so important, but on defense, maybe nobody better uh, than Cam Hayward, who's uh, in the final year of a big contract he signed, uh, and that's been one of the things that he would like to get a deal done. We're going to hear from him in a second, but Charlie, I just want to talk about just how do you explain a guy getting better at that position? You know, if you look around and you do the demographic, uh, demographic search on guys who are in their 30s, he ranks as one of the best guys. You know, Aaron Rodgers is up there. You got the Jones, uh, the wide receiver. You got uh, Chandler. You got Cam Hayward is right there. He's 31 years old. Can you expect this to continue? Because he seems like he's motivated to continue for many more years. I can expect it to continue. And we all know as we get up there in age, father time, it catches up with us. So one thing that you tend to do as your physical skills start to diminish, now you get sharper mentally and anticipating what's about to happen. When the offense lines up, a big cam, he can tell you right standing right across from you what's about to happen, and he anticipates, and that's how he's making play after play and continues to make a Pro Bowl at the age that he's at now. 
Yeah, I remember last year in the game against Cincinnati and Dalton, he had uh, two and a half sacks and a forced fumble in that game. And in his career, 54 career sacks. You just don't see that kind of production from a guy on a defensive line, but he has that ability to get it done. And earlier we had a chance to ask him a couple of questions and his thoughts about going into 2020. Y'all know where I stand. Uh, you know, I want to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, I want to lead this team to a Super Bowl. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll see where we are. You know, um, I love my team. I love my teammates. Uh, you know, I love the city, the coaches. Um, and I love being a Pittsburgh Steeler. But, um, you know, um, you got to take two to tango. So, Charlie, uh, the question is, uh, how do they get it done? And I, I mentioned this to Art Rooney. It's a difficult time because they don't know exactly what the salary cap will be after a season like this. And yet uh, he's a guy who wants to be here. They want him to be here. But it's about how much money can you can you expect to give him over the course of uh, four or five years. And, and Cam wants to be here. He expressed it. You can see it, the look on his face, the frustration for not having a deal done. The organization wants him here. What is that number? We just don't know because of the financial losses that are going to happen with this season. What's the, what's the salary cap and anticipation for next year and beyond? Those are things his agent and this team and Omar Khan is going to try to figure out how they can work it together. But they have have to figure out a way to keep him here because Cam is the dominant player on this defensive front. He better be here. Yeah, and there are a lot of motivated guys here. Tunch, are you still with us over there? Because I wanted to ask you about motive. Okay, he's not there, but I was going to talk about the motivation. And, Charlie, you can relate to this, too. When you're in that position when you have one year left on a deal and you want to make it happen, they have a lot of guys in that situation. And coaches love it because it means these guys will work hard to put up numbers, but it also means you're going to have a lot of tough decisions at the end of the season. You do, and there's a lot of players that are, you know, in that particular front. You have Juju Smith-Schuster, James Conner, of course, we're th you know, those are mentioned. But Cam Hayward, he's in a situation here. He's drafted number one here. He wants to win a Super Bowl. He made all the individual accolades. There's something missing on his resume in that Super Bowl. That's what he wants to do. You hear ben, heard Ben Roethlisberger talk about winning two, at least two more Super Bowls. Cam is just trying to win his first, and when you haven't been to the big game, it adds fuel to the fire, and this is a guy that's going to have one huge year this year. All right, we have plenty more coming up as the Steelers are on the field here on a night practice at Heinz Field. It's Steelers Training Camp Live, presented by FedEx on a beautiful night here in Pittsburgh. We will be back right after this on CW.
Training Camp Live, presented by FedEx right here on Pittsburgh CW. Hope you've uh, had fun watching these guys on the field in game uniforms as they use this as a kind of a ramp up to the next couple of weeks. And before you know it, it'll be football season uh, in the NFL and here in Pittsburgh. Charlie, I want to talk about something that could be a problem in that coaches love to use preseason games to find you know, diamonds in the rough, guys who can come in and contribute on special teams. You see this often where guys you really don't know much about, but they earn an opportunity. This year they're not going to get that opportunity, at least not in preseason games. So how do you identify people who can help you on special teams? They're going to try to go out here and simulate what you can't get in the games out here in practice. So when, you, when I look at this and think about special teams, a few names that actually stands out, you're talking about Robert Spillane, Ulysses Gilbert, Tuzar Skipper, Ryan Switzer. You know, these are names that you're trying to now evaluate and see what they can bring to the special teams, and they better go out here and get that opportunity here within the next seven to ten days because you, you lose that as you approach cut down day. And that's a big part of it. You know, a third of the game. They practice it a lot. They need guys who are good at doing it, and certainly Derek Watt added to the equation helps for the loss of Tyler Matikiewicz. Uh I want to also ask you, Charlie, about the offensive line because Stefan Wisniewski was somebody they brought in, and a lot of people thought he would be the automatic replacement at Ramon Foster at left guard. But Filer, Matt Filer, who played so well at right tackle, you thought that was his position. They moved him there, and he's been there, and he won't come out of there, which means Wisniewski's a nice, flexible guy to have as depth, but that leaves Okora for and Banner. Of those two, who do you think will end up as the starting right tackle? I think right now all, the, all indications are talking about Chooks Okafor sitting at that right tackle but if you're talking to Zach Banner you're going to have something to say about that so you knew that battle was going to take place you mentioned with Snooski what's going to happen with Matt Fowler I think we saw the glimpse of that last year when the Rams came into Pittsburgh and you saw Fowler start and did a really good job against Aaron Donald on that defensive front so they knew that he was capable of replacing Ramon Foster and you still have a veteran guy if things don't work out that way but Overall, they have plenty of depth on this uh, offense, and this is going to be a position really that can be a strength, and they're going to utilize that in the running game. And there's another guy who's not practicing tonight. He got injured, but, boy, Kevin Dotson. They called him the people mover, Charlie, when he was in college. He, that's what he did. Uh, Fourth-round pick, and I would expect in time he is going to play a role on this team. They really like that guy, and uh, he's another name to remember. When you see him in action, he'll be wearing number 69. And that's going to do it. Charlie, it's been fun. Looking forward to it. Likewise. All right. That's going to do it for our coverage here tonight for Charlie Batch and Tun Chilkin, Missy Matthews, and our entire talented staff. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here on Pittsburgh CW. Steelers practice uh, will continue tonight, and then they'll put in another full week. And before you know it, it'll be September the 14th, a Monday night opener at the Giants. For all of us here, I'm Bob Pompiani. Have a wonderful night. Steelers season, hashtag here we go, is almost here. And we look forward to seeing you also on KDK and Pittsburgh CW throughout the course of the weeks. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you again soon.